city or a town of frown The business of a crown of the living that abounds of the church and the announcements It's doing what counts The underground sound in a city or a town of frown The business of a crown of the living that abounds of the church and the announcements It's doing what counts the underground sound is the voice within to give ear to the spirit and to flee from sin to live for Jesus in the praise of him by not selling out for the praise of men to do whatever it takes no matter what the cost to keep pushing up the weight carrying the cross straight bench pressing sin defend the word that lacks and your best mention him but then you go die cause the underground sound in a city or a town Oh, hey, Dan Bell here. As many of you guys know, I'm a world's strongest powerlifter. I actually just uh, just finished up reading this book from Scott Davenport, so uh, Mixed Martial Arts. I love how he gets in the mindset grit required to become successful. Scott tells a story of how it was installed to him in his early years. He then takes you through his rise through fighting, the camps, the coaches, his influences, and his opponents. He also dives into the hardships, the challenges, and injuries, everything that needs he needed to overcome. Scott's virtues and faith carried him through these hardships and challenges to find your own. That mindset and that lessons that Scott learned and expressed in this book can be transferred to almost any endeavor. If you're interested in this story and how hard work, perseverance, faith can carry a person to their goals, this book is definitely for you. Yeah, so is your uh your faith in God is a big part of your strength? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's a part of my strength. And I think uh, Jerusalem is one of holy city in the world for uh, Christian, for Jewish people, and for Muslim people. It's three faiths in one city. So I think... Uh, if you really think you're tired or you think you're just not going to be able to do something big in the sport area after you're going to western wall after you visit uh, jerusalem you feel completely completely different because you have different energy in that city and uh, it just help you. Wow. So is it more of like a spiritual energy, would you say? I believe, yes. It's more spiritual energy, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. the Western Wall just kind of fills your soul up and then you just feel like re-energized to keep going? Yeah, I, I would say so. And uh, believe me or not, before uh, Finland 2005, when I went over there, I did so great. And I was feeling like I did something uh, for my family, for just, I did something big just to create something. And with spiritual energy, it was helping me a lot. Yeah, you know, that's interesting with, like, uh, elite athletes. Um, I've heard uh, there, there's a documentary on, you know, you know Fedor Emelianenko? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I remember seeing a documentary where someone was talking about him, and it, I think he's a psychologist or something, and he said that Fedor has this spiritual energy, like he doesn't get, like, this... Almost like a, it's like a eternal energy, you know. Eternal, yeah. Because I noticed when we talk, you always talk about that too. Because you always say that you feel that, like, you know, you're like, I feel a good energy, a good positive. Uh, yeah, I mean, 
back in the days, like I'm talking like thousand, two thousand years ago, human being always try to believe on something for something. And if you believe for something good, for something positive, it will be happened sooner or later. But you have different people who always complain about his life, who always feel like bad. On white color, he see only like black marks, you know. So that people, I try to try to tell them, hey, I'm not your friend. I don't want to know you. Just leave me alone, you know. Yeah. So I believe it, every stops, every each barrier, everything. It's on your mind, in your mind, and if you try to create something big, you're gonna create it. But since beginning, if you're gonna stop yourself and you're gonna say, "Hey, listen, it's never gonna be happy. I'm not able to do it." How come a lot of people from injuries? I'm talking especially now about me. After three ligament, they switch me on my left uh, knee, and I did what I did. And some people call me like. Uh, the Russian man with left bionic knee. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah, I did, and I came from such a big injury, and I did it because people who know me, first of all, my family, and I myself, I was believing myself. And I had a lot of support. But if you doesn't have that support, if you doesn't believe yourself, you just stop your mind. A lot, a lot of people asking me, how come it doesn't hurt to your body? I said, my body doesn't lift. What lift with kind of it, it's only my mind. That's it. Yeah, you just ignore your body. I mean, you suffer, you have pain, but everything in your head. Albert Einstein, Albert Einstein used to say, we only use of our brain only 5 to 7%. But when you're going to such a big lift weight, I believe even like maybe not you, but some other people going to, make joke or laughing about this, what I'm going to say on the podcast. But everything, it's in your brain, on your mind, and you doesn't use your 5-7% when you're such a high adrenaline. You use your brain and after your body much more because it's kind of stress situation. Like, it's going to be like this. Or we're going to kill you, or you're going to lift. So you have other option. You have to lift. You know what I mean? Yeah. Is that what you think about when you lift? This is how I see things in heavy weights and heavy lifts. This is how I especially see that kind of things. If you, if you think different, if you feel different, if you want to say, I'd be happy to hear it. Is that the, is that the way you need to think to, to lift the world record, the weights? Do you think? Yes. Do you think yes. all guys that, that lift that kind of weight, they think like that? Uh, I believe yes. Yeah. They have I, know, mind. I know. I know when uh, we compete with Andy Bolton, he was going – to his each attempt to first to second to third like it was the last time or he's gonna die or he's gonna lift that's it there's no doubt any other attempt is not gonna be happening in our life it's just gonna happen today or you lift or you die there's no other day no our no any other option nobody gonna give you and i believe even like you said uh, Fred Hatfield, right? 
Yeah. He did his world record in 45 years of age. Yeah. Which is mean, which is mean. He didn't, he didn't say no, but hey, listen, I'm old guy or I have a pain in my ass. I have pain in my balls or whatever he got. He just did it. Nothing stopped him. It's mean. He said, I'm going to do it. And he did this. And I think, yeah, or you're going to die, or you're going to lift. Yeah, he said that he got into a closet in his mind, is what he said. He would go into a closet, and I think he said he would even pray in there, in his head. You know, he would say a prayer, and uh, he said that's where you get in the zone. I don't know uh, about you, about, like, big guys, like big lifters, but when I am going like to big lifts, to lift heavy lifts, heavy weights. I am trying not to talk to nobody, nothing. Just put on me towel or just turn around with chair against the wall. People close to me, around to me, it doesn't exist. Wow. For how long before your lift? 15 minutes. Do you think you do you feel like you're going crazy in those fifteen minutes or what? Like, what's that like? Crazy, crazy. I'm going for sure, but only when I see the bar, and when I see bar, I doesn't feel weights. I feel so, something heavy, make pressure on me. That's it. Yeah, Julius Maddox said when he 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 feels like sick almost, like he can't eat on the day he's gonna go for a big record. But then he said once they call his name, it's like a flip switches and he's like, he's going to kill it. I don't know if I told you, I am like about three years, maybe a little bit more, I sleep with CPAP. And when I went to Belarus in Minsk, I couldn't sleep well in that night before going to meet. Uh, just was feeling like bad, I don't know, maybe stressed a little bit or something. But also it was very cold, it was a lot of winter, it was, it was a lot of snow, I'm sorry. It was winter time. And when I came over, it was like 10, 10 a.m., 10 a.m. something, and I was like busy, you know. And after like, I just went to warm up room. I just wake up. <laughs> and again, if you believe in yourself and your family support you, we believe in you, everything possible. And like I said, uh, if somebody doing world record in the gym, for me, it doesn't count. You have to do record in international contest. has to be has official. Has to be, yeah, yeah. That's it. I believe I believe I still have a couple more years to do another big meet and I think I'm gonna do it. But uh, 2020 is most terrible years for everybody. For sport, for 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 every human being. 2020 this year it shouldn't be exist. Yeah, it's uh, it kind of stopped everything. And believe me or not, I forgot to tell you, 2008 it was the same year. It was year of the rat, rat year. And 2008 I had a, such a bad injury on in my life, which is, was 12 years ago exactly. Oh really? Oh. Yeah, 2008, 2012. Next one, it will be 2032. It will be a red year again. And this is most disgusting animal. Yeah. Dirty did, and disgusting. When did the knee injury happen? And what, 
What were you doing? 2008. 2008? Yep. And what were you doing? Squat? 13, 10 or 13, 20. 13, 20? Yeah. And uh, Greg, uh, he put me on ambulance. I don't know where it was met, but I remember Greg was close to me. Wow. Like, look at me. You know we joined Patella on your knee, right? Yeah. yeah. If you stay forward, straight, Patella, look forward, right? My body was here, Patella was in the back. Oh, man. That's scary. It was scary. It was a lot of pain, but somehow I didn't pass out, and I am happy. I just screamed like a lot, and Louis said, it's a bad fucking injury. <laughs> Did you think you were done? Positive. I was thinking I'm done. Wow. Positive. Do you feel like God put the right people in your life for you to succeed, like Louis Simmons? Uh, I, I wouldn't say so. Uh, the God give me in our uh, case to check me how I strong spiritually, how I strong inside. He give me an option to check me. If I gonna went through it, I gonna fix myself, I gonna come back or just gonna say, or oh, just fuck it, I'm a weak person. Just leave it. Yeah, it's just a test. Yeah. Some guy asked another guy, why you need your head? And other guy answered him, I just need to eat, put food in my mouth, take a shit, and that's it. This is how I use my body. He said, if you think so, you should have born and wet on the earth because you're useless. Yeah. <laughs> I think even in Bible, God said and tell us, your body, human being, human being, need take care of your body. Your body is a very smart machine. You cannot be useless person. You cannot wake up in the morning, have a breakfast after you need to have a lunch, dinner, come to your house, make sex with your wife, bring kids to the life, and no, not do nothing. It's like kind of animal way. Yeah, yeah, you have to honor the gifts you're given, right? I mean, you have to do what you can. And I think it says that your body is a temple. Exactly, your body is a temple. Even Bible says this. Torah, Bible, everything. And I think it says you're, you're, that uh, if you're given a, a gift, you have to do something with it. You can't, you know. You if, can't... You, if, you, if you have a gift and you choose one, you have to, with gift, give to somebody else, to switch over to other people. Yeah. This is yeah. how I believe and this is, how I know should the things work out. And I mean, you have to do everything you can as well, right? Because like I tell this to, you know, of top power lifters all the time, like someone like you, it, there's very few people in the world who could even lift what you could lift, you know? So you almost have to, you have to, honor what God gave you the gift to be able to do it, and you have to do it. You have to do it. Otherwise, you're throwing your gift away. Yeah, but one thing uh, I didn't say, in wet place, in wet country where I live, nobody cares, nobody give a shit what you're doing, what kind of gift, what kind of talent you have. 
because in that country what's popular is basketball or football like a soccer that's it but believe me or not in the united states i was even a citizen and people was respecting me much more people were saying listen we know this guy this guy can do crazy things but where i am live unfortunately but again I believe in myself. My wife, she's believe in myself. I have a big support, and I believe I can do still big things, and nothing and nobody gonna stop me. This is my formula to big lifts. That's the formula right there. N nothing to edit from my side. This is uh, m my way for for my life, and like you said. Uh, Whatever it's happened, injury, you think you're done? I was positive I'm finished, yeah. But uh, from somewhat reason, something inside start to fight me inside. I was telling like, to myself, you weak person, you just piece of shit, you have to wake up, you have to do it again and again. And after I just wake you up, I'm, I mean, I, wa I wake myself from like, deep deep dreaming you know what i mean i, I had a big like a deep dream and i just awake myself i said hey awake wake up you have to do it something wow that happened to you yeah i i believe yeah my my, my body was my body feel like rusty rust rusty yeah. Yeah. I, I was feeling I'm like useless. Wow. Yeah. And then you just decided, no, I have to, I have to do this. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you think you have gotten close to your maximum abilities or do you feel like you have much more? I think power, spiritual power, it helped me to solve like a big problem and spiritual power helped me uh, to avoid around me negative energy, negative people and with spiritual power helping me to move forward. So you're still moving forward? Uh, for now, as I told you, like eight, nine weeks, I am out of heavy training because of COVID-19, all this stuff, area, you know, all this shit what happened on whole world. But I believe since next week, things going to change it and I start, I will start to going to bring my shape back. Your mind's ready. Yeah, especially from that kind of conversation with you, I feel much more uh, fresh. Yeah, yeah, like a new, like a fresh, fresh breath of air. Like I feel I put my phone on charger and it gives me a lot of energy. It's charging, you're ready to go again. Yeah. And from 2018, it was end. Since beginning 2018, I had a good rest, and I'm ready to come back again. Yeah. You're ready to go back to battle, but where is Greg Nora, and where is Matt winning? <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you another thing, Scott, what I think. If you want to lift heavy, heavy numbers, you want to do heavy lifts, Never say numbers because, as I told you, if you're never going to do it, a lot of people going to say, hey, listen, you promised us something. You never did this, so you piece of shit. You have to keep your word. We saying, I mean, I used to grow up in not really good neighborhoods, and people used to saying, never, never, ever say your word and 
if you say a word, it's never gonna back again. It's not, it's not a bird. So always keep your word, because if you're not gonna do it, you piece of shit. You just bullshit talker. That's it. That's good, man. And uh, you know, you're a world record holder, so I think you you got a good word. <laughs> but uh, you you still. You know, no numbers, but you still because uh, most guys they're they're finished, right? They stop trying to keep going, but uh, you still have dreams and and vision that you could do more than you've ever done. Still, still, I think, but in that conversation, I'm not going to be tell you. And yeah, I, I I still have vision, and still people believe in me, and I believe in myself. But in that conversation, I don't want to say nothing. What it can 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 hurt me in the future. But you still have it in your heart to fight the battle, still to go to war. Still, still I have to go to battle. Yeah, I believe I, I need to come back. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome, Vlad. Well, that's uh that's a perfect place I feel to end it, and uh, so we'll end it right there. Thank you for doing this, and we're gonna do it again with Greg. Panora, and we're going to do it again with Matt Winning, too. I've talked to both of them, and they want to do a podcast with you. So those those are going to be awesome. Yeah, absolutely. I was happy talking to you. It was great conversation. Great dialogue. Right on. Thank you, Vlad. And uh, I will talk to you soon, very soon. 